Welcome to Neath Port Talbot Council and Sestrans Cymru's Active Travel Mapping Session. I'll explain the term active travel in a little while. My name is Tara and I work for Sestrans Cymru. Sestrans is a charity making it easier for people to walk and cycle. We connect people and places, create neighbourhoods which are good places to live in, transform the journey to school and make travelling to work a happier, healthier experience. Sestrans works in partnership with many different groups and organisations, bringing people together to find the right solutions to make walking and cycling the easiest option. We make the case for improving the physical and social environment for walking and cycling by using robust evidence and showing what can be done. We're currently working with your local authority to improve active travel routes in your area. Active travel is when walking, cycling, scooting and wheeling are used as a transport mode. So, instead of going by car to somewhere you need or want to go, you go on foot, by bike or scooter. It usually includes the use of mobility scooters and wheelchairs. You may use active travel on your journey to school, to the shop, to your football training session or piano lesson. Active travel doesn't include rides or walks you do only for exercise or leisure, although you may use the same routes whether you're heading to the shop or going for a walk. So why do we want to increase the levels of active travel? There are many reasons, including physical and mental health benefits. It improves the local environment by reducing pollution, as well as reducing greenhouse gas emissions, which affect our whole world by changing our climates. It reduces traffic jams and congestion and creates healthier and happier places for everyone. In 2013, the Active Travel Act became a law in Wales. This law is to help make walking and cycling the preferred way of getting around over shorter distances. It's a powerful tool for local authorities and politicians to rethink the way our roads and communities are built. It also makes sure that our roads and communities are built with active travel in mind, not just car travel. Active travel is very popular and often the preferred, preferred transport mode in some countries. In the Netherlands, around 65% of pupils travel actively to school. In Wales, the figure is 44% among primary school pupils and 34% at secondary school. Now we'll see a four minute clip of a video on cycling in Amsterdam, the Netherlands capital city. While you're watching the video, think about how many benefits of active travel you can hear and see. What do you think the main differences are between cycling in the Netherlands and cycling in Wales? Amsterdam in the late 1950s said, in 30 years time, no one's going to be riding a bike in Amsterdam. Um, you know, the car is the future. The businessman political parties were all for it, so the cars completely overwhelmed the city in the 1960s. You know, where we're standing, there were many cars parked absolutely everywhere. You barely see a parked car from where I'm standing right now at all. Well, what a lot of people don't know, we've been where you've been. You know, where cars were everything. You know, cars were progress and they try to build highways through the downtown area, you know, and a lot of kids got killed in traffic. And halfway to 70s, people here said no more. It was too much. So they rose up and they made a change for the better because it was just unacceptable. This, this is a special spot in Amsterdam. It is right at the edge of the city center. Um, behind the camera, you see the narrow streets of the city center and right behind me, you see a wider profile. This street had been widened and the idea was in the 1970s to make this street so wide uh, that it would connect to a, a circular route around the city center that was placed here, six lanes of cars, so that all the city center could be easily reached by car. But the people in Amsterdam, they realized what should happen, what, what has to happen to make this a six lane car street. Then you have to break down houses over there and even further and fill in parts of the canals. Um, so many people were opposed this plan. In 1972, early 1972, it was in the city council, this part of the plan was uh, rejected and that in the end was sort of the end of the old traffic plan for the city. So many people realized, oh, this 
thing with everyone owning a car in this city. It's just not working. It's, they're loud, they're polluting, they're noisy, there's just no room for them all, and uh, they're dangerous. So that the tide began to turn. In the inner canal rings of Amsterdam, like where we are here, um, there's a lot of shared space in terms of uh, pedestrians, cars, bicycles, mopeds. It's very easy, it works, um, the cars aren't driving so fast and the bikes aren't even going that fast either. So everyone takes turns, everyone is nice and civilized about it. On the main arterial roads, it's a different story. Uh, the cars are driving much faster and so there's off-street cycle paths which range between six and eight feet in width and the cyclists then have a straight shot to wherever they're going and they're protected because they're on a raised cycle path. The whole system is built for utilitarian cyclists, for grandmas, for little kids, for mamas and papas, for executives, for whoever is riding their bike. And you're riding on simple bikes, you're not going fast. And uh, people show a lot of respect, especially if you're riding with kids. Here we are at the busiest bicycle junction in Amsterdam and actually it's also a very busy car junction and underneath we have the metro line. If you start counting now how many cyclists are, are crossing this junction, you have high numbers. And then the bikes have to stop because the cars are coming. And these cars, you, have, you think, oh there's many many more cars than you have bicycles, but it's not true. There's way more cyclists going here in only 30 seconds than cars are crossing in the other direction in one and a half minutes. So there you see the big advantage of cycling for a city is that you have way higher capacity of people if they go by, by bike than if they go by car. There are lots of reasons why many people in Wales do not walk and cycle. Barriers to active travel vary and can be different for different people. Barriers are the things that stop you from feeling happy and confident to choose active travel. We want to hear about the barriers that affect you. For example, there may be a section of pavement you walk along to get to school where cars are parked which means you either have to squeeze past or walk on the road. You may regularly cycle along a path with broken glass on the floor which means you get punctures. Or there may be overhanging branches that mean you have to get off the bike to get underneath them. In some cases, there may be no route at all, or it's so poor that you don't use it. For example, you might want to walk or cycle to the skate park or swimming pool, but because there's no active travel path, you either don't go, you take the bus, or you get a lift from an adult in a car. Please tell us about anything, big or small, that stops you from travelling actively. So, now you know what active travel is, what the benefits are, and the barriers that can stop people from walking, cycling, scooting or wheeling. Now, the super important bit, which is how we want you to help us. You know your area a lot better than we do, so we need you to tell us how we can make active travel easier, safer and nicer in your community. Once this video is finished, your teacher will open up a map of your area, which will look a little like this. What we would like you to do is to have a discussion with a partner or group in your class, or if you're at home, discuss it with a parent or sibling. We want you to point out where the barriers to active travel are. So for example, at point A, it takes a long time to cross a road due to lots of traffic and the lack of a safe crossing point. Or it could be that at point B, there is a good path that you use, but it gets wet and slippery in the winter. You can provide as many examples as you want, but it would be great if you could include your top three first. Once you've shared your thoughts, we will look at your comments and share them with the local authority. Then we'll work with officers and counsellors to ensure a good network of walking and cycling routes are put on a map. The map will help shape active travel in your area of Neathport Talbot over the next 15 years, so it's an important piece of work. Thank you very much for your help in improving active travel in Neathport Talbot with Sestrans Cymru and we look forward to hearing about your local area.